Good afternoon. My name is Whitney McGuire, and I am co-founder of an initiative called Sustainable Brooklyn. We work to close the gaps between the mainstream sustainability movement and targeted communities. These are communities that are consisting of black and brown indigenous people upon whom the burden of environmental degradation and systemic injustice squarely falls. I am here to acknowledge the labor of my ancestors and all who worked and continue to work the land against their will for generations. My ancestors worked and died and were born and worked and died and so on for the sake of the viability of the American economic system, including the fashion industry. It's time to acknowledge the deep history fashion has with the legacy of exploitation and disposability of people and planet so that we can move forward toward an industry that benefits all life. Indigenous cultures have practiced circularity and sustainability in the most poignant ways for generations. And yet by POC cultures, especially women, are the first to be impacted, silenced, worked, oftentimes to death, then discarded. Here are some facts. The American fashion industry began as a system built on the economics of the transatlantic slave trade and the exportation of cotton, which allowed America to position itself as a leader in global trade and economics. The Mohawk iron workers built a majority of the high rises right here in Manhattan. Today, the fashion supply chain funnels more money toward modern slavery than any other industry outside of tech. And yet, as our culture, born from the magic of survival, is exported throughout the world, white designers and white-owned fashion houses continue to steal the intellectual property and creative capital of descendants of enslaved Africans without credit, without compensation, and without hesitation. Underlying these facts is the assumption that apparently to profit at scale, exploitation of people is necessary. But we all know this just isn't true. I'm not here to talk about the sufferings of my ancestors and the exploitation of human beings and the planet that continues to this day. I'm here to talk about the resilience of people, of my people. We continue to be leaders in the most significant industries and movements not because we have been welcomed with open arms, but because we are imbued with the magic of survival. Won't you come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill us and has failed? Shout out Lucille Clifton. <laughs> the, input, the impacts of exploitation can be eradicated once we uproot the fundamental cause of this legacy. We have to learn from those who've suffered the most and those who fought on the front lines of movements for justice and equity for generations. We lose when we fail to see the contributions of other cultures as valid, just because they are different than our own. We lose when we believe inhibitors to the sustainability of all people in our planet are too big to tackle. We lose when we stop having hope. So today, Let's orient our minds toward the direction of healing the deepest generational wounds. Let's begin by taking accountability for any pain we have caused another to suffer. And let's commit to learning as much as we can so that when we leave this earth, she has nothing but appreciation and gratitude for our time here. Thank you.